Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about Smash Factor 11, which is going to be the final super major of the ranking season, as well as Mexico's first major of 2024. So this is a pretty big deal for all of the Mexican talent that wasn't able to leave the region. This is their only chance to be eligible for the Lumi rank. And you also have a ton of invaders coming to the event to make it extra spicy for our top 16 seeds. You got Siski, MK Big Boss, Mew Days, and Shiny Mark in 13th. Meister, MK Leo, Gact, and Lima in ninth and seventh you got glutiny and osimo fifth is shadow zomba fourth is light third is tweak second is sonics and projected to win the entire thing is spargo and i should also add that zomba and tweak are going to be dequeuing from the event so i'm just going to completely ignore them whenever we see them in the bracket so our first top seed is going to be Spargo, and his first opponent is likely going to be Super Dog, and Spargo is going to be the heavy favorite coming in to this matchup. Mario just doesn't have a lot of fun versus Swords, and Spargo has three massive Swords to choose from, so definitely expect him to win that one. Then it's going to be either MK Big Boss or Cosmos facing him. This one's pretty interesting. They played twice before. First set goes in Big Boss's favor. Second set goes in Cosmos's favor, and I do think that Aegis does beat Rob. The neutral is just so much fun for Aegis, and you have such amazing utilization out of the gyro now will cosmos be able to get utilization out of the gyro that's a different story but overall i do think the matchup is in its favor you do have that really nice win condition for rob in getting the edge guard but i'm going to be going with cosmos to take the upset here not only have i just been incredibly impressed by his play recently but also the matchup slightly in his favor so he gets points for that then it's going to be spargo versus cosmos and i am going to be giving this one to spargo i've said it before i'll say it again whenever it's spargo versus another sortie i'm almost always going to favor Spargo, but I do think Cosmos has a very real chance in this matchup. He's beaten Spargo before, and as I literally just said, I think he's been playing fantastically, so do not completely count him out, but it's still Spargo. And to face Spargo, our first opponent is likely going to be Glutiny and Capitan Sito. And this is a very difficult one for me because they've only played once. It was three years ago. And Glutiny does end up taking it, but Capitan Sito is so much better than he used to be. Glutiny, of course, is as well. And I would be a liar if I said I knew the intricacies of Wario versus Me Gunner. But Glutiny has so much experience versus the real Me Gunner, which is Samus, that I think he'll be able to handle the game plan of Capitan Sito and he should be able to move on. But genuinely i have very little idea of who is going to take this one i'm honestly really excited to see how it unfolds but i'll give glutiny the benefit of the doubt then you're gonna have gak versus apollo kage and i would still slightly favor ness versus snake just because he forces you to play a different style of smash you cannot rely on your grenades you can't rely on any explosions at all because ness is just gonna suck those up and get rid of all that damage but on the other hand it is extremely easy for snake to get rid of ness if he is ever put in a situation where he has to up b he's just gonna die pretty much every single time because of the way that snake's kit works he's got these really hard hitting moves that are just going to destroy a character like ness so i'm going to still go with gak on this one just because the politog has been a little bit shaky recently but i do think that he has what it takes to overcome this bad matchup and then you're going to have glutiny versus gak and historically this has been a pretty good matchup for gak but you did have glutiny taking their last encounter and i think he's going to take this one as well i just think that people are getting a lot better at edge guarding ness specifically a character like wario who has wario downer which is a ridiculous move that nobody talks about for some reason so i'm going to say that glutiny ends up taking that one and then you're going to have the projected matchup of spargo versus gluttony and you have spargo winning their last two encounters now they haven't played in quite some time and when you have two titans like this that historically go back and forth it is pretty tough to predict who's going to win I'm going to go with Spargo because he has the element of the unknown on his side. He could bust out some crazy new tech or some crazy new character. And also, I just think that he is going to be playing so hot at this event. He has that fire underneath him. He wants to prove himself. He's in his home country, and I think he's going to get into the winner's side of top eight. Our next top seed is going to be Light, and his first opponent is likely going to be Chag. Now, they haven't played in quite some time, and I do believe that Light never dropped a set to Chag when he was actively competing in the U.S., but I wouldn't quote me on that one. Regardless, though, I would still favor Light in this matchup. He just historically has been pretty good versus Paul Tano players, but I wouldn't completely count Chag out. I think he's an extremely underrated player just because he hasn't been able to travel recently, but he's someone that I would still put in contention for best Paul Tano player in the world. Even though it's definitely Raffalo right now, I would still have Chag in that conversation regardless of 
going to favor Light to win that one. Then you're going to have either Siski or Waka. And this matchup is honestly one of the most important ones of the tournament because if Siski wins this one, or rather Siski beats Waka, I would expect Light to beat Siski. I think Fox Samus is definitely in Fox's favor. Samus just doesn't really get the opportunity to set up that charge shot, get her gimmicks from across the stage going because Fox is going to run you down. And if he doesn't manage to run you down, then he has a reflector. So he's actively hard countering your game plan in pretty much every aspect of play, which sucks. But then you're going to have Waka on the other hand, which is like a hard counter to Fox, because if you touch Luigi's shield, you're either going to get grabbed, in which case you'll probably die, or you're going to get upbeat, where then you'll definitely die. Like it is just such a difficult matchup. It's a really difficult for Fox to edge guard Luigi as well, which is like the main flaw of the character. So this Siski Waka matchup is extremely important. And I do think that Siski is going to win it just because Samus Luigi is pretty tough for Luigi. He's just not able to get in at all versus that character. And he gets walled out super, super hard. But if Waka manages to make that upside over Siski, it could be a pretty interesting bracket. Then you're going to have Shattuck versus Mao. And I do think that Shattuck is going to take this one. FGC characters, specifically Mao plays Ken and Ryu, just do not do very well versus Korin. You have such a difficult time in the disadvantage that you're not able to get that close pressure like you are versus most characters because Korin has this massive sword that keeps you out. She also has no problem breaking focus because, oh, what's that? You focus through one of my moves. I'm just going to throw out like another one and she can do that with pretty much every single move that she has. So yeah, Shadow should definitely be taking that one. Then you're going to have Lima versus Big D and this is one that I honestly have no idea who is going to win. They've never played before. I don't know who wins between Ice Climbers and Bayonetta because on one hand, Bayonetta has no problem desyncing the climbers you could easily get nana in the air and popo he just kind of has to watch and just pray that she comes down safely but on the other hand i don't know if bayo combos actually work on ice climbers and the second that the climbers actually get their hands on bayo it's just gonna be not a lot of fun i'm gonna give lima the benefit of the doubt because i've been just very impressed by his play but this is gonna be a matchup that you should definitely keep your eye on because it's also a very important matchup because if it's shattuck big d heavily favor shattuck there if it's shattuck lima i would actually slightly favor lima even though you do have shattuck winning their last encounter historically that has been a very dominant one for lima i also think that bayonetta does pretty well into corin so i'm gonna be going with lima to take that upset there even though shattuck has been remarkable and then you're gonna have light versus lima i do think that light is going to win that one bayonetta fox uh i do think it is in fox's favor the gun is surprisingly very useful in that matchup especially the way that lima plays it because he wants to be camping you i could just shoot the gun from across the stage and when you actually want to approach me now you're boxing with fox and that is not a ton of fun so gonna be saying that light wins that one and moves on top eight winner's side our next top seed is going to be Sonics, and his first opponent is going to be Beastly. And I think Beastly is a good enough player to beat someone of Sonic's caliber. I think Diddy Kong has the tools to beat Sonic, but I don't think that Beastly is going to beat Sonic. So you have Sonic with so much experience in the Diddy Kong matchup at this point because of how many times that he has played Tweak, and he's clearly put a lot of work into that matchup. But maybe he's used to that Tweak style of Diddy Kong. The Beastly style throws him off. Diddy is a character you can play in a multitude of different ways. It's not impossible, but is it probable? No. Uh, then you're going to have Shiny Mark versus Rocks. I definitely think that Shiny Mark is going to win this one. I would favor Pikachu versus Sheik just because you're able to low profile a ton of her stuff. It's really hard for Sheik to get value out of Deedles in that matchup just because Pikachu is almost never on the ground. He's constantly either t dodging or quick attacking. You're never going to be able to line those needles up and God forbid you're never going to be able to get a kill confirm off of those needles. Rocks is really good though so again don't count him out but I think Shiny Mark is going to win that one and I also think that Shiny Mark is going to make the big upset over Sonics. These two have never played offline before despite having like thousands of sets online and a lot of those sets more recently have been going into shiny mark's favor and that is why i am picking him here i also think that pikachu is one of the two characters in this game that has a argument for actually beating sonic just because he's the only character in the game that can actually out camp sonic and if anyone's gonna out camp sonics it's gonna be shiny mark next up is gonna be osimo versus gilhu and I think Gilhue is going to make the upset here. Now, hear me out. Kirby is a character that I think deals decently with the FGC characters. The really poor air mobility of Kirby doesn't really come up as much in this match, which is because the FGC characters aren't going to be hounding you down in the air. They're not going to be trying to pressure you. They're going to be, for the most part, grounded. Maybe Osimo less so, just because he loves using that nair. But I think Gilhue is going to be able to navigate around that. And the edge guards are so good on Ryu. The multi-hits are really annoying versus that character. There's just a lot of things for Kirby that are good enough in the matchup, 
where I think Gale Hughes' talent can take him over the edge and bring him that upset. Then you're going to have Meister versus Mr. R, and I do think that Meister is going to win this one. Sheik Game Watch can be pretty difficult for Sheik. I don't think it's an unwinnable matchup by any means just because of how light Game Watch is. All it takes is one or two good conversions, but it's really hard to get those conversions, especially against a player like Meister who is going to be very aware of what Mr. R is fishing for, but who knows? Maybe the Krom comes out and sweeps house. I'm not saying it can't happen, but I'm saying it probably won't happen. Then you're going to have Meister versus versus Gilhue, and I definitely think that Meister is going to win that one. You know, Kirby versus Ryu, I can see it happening. Kirby Game Watch, I think that one is a lot harder to swallow. And then you're going to have Shiny Mark versus Meister. And I do think that Shiny Mark is going to win this one. We actually got the chance to see them play twice at the pre-local. You have Shiny Mark losing that first set, and then you have him winning that second set. And even though the matchup is definitely in Meister's favor, Game Watch is probably Pikachu's worst matchup. I'm honestly pretty confident in saying that. The way that Shiny Mark plays it is so excellent. He has completely crafted his game plan around not using Tejal and just figuring out how can I exploit this character? His usage of up air specifically is just beautiful. And I think he's done enough research where he's going to be able to overcome that minus one. And our final top seed is going to be Tweak. But as I already mentioned, both him and Zamba are going to be DQing from this event. At least I'm pretty sure they're DQing from this event. So if they're not, you know, sorry to speak, Zamba fans that I didn't talk about them. But we're just going to be giving their opponents a buy. So on just event moves on, has our moves on because I just assume that they're going to be able to beat the opponent that is likely to replace those two. So then you're going to have Mude SkyJ and MK Leo Allen. Just starting with Mude SkyJ. They've actually played a couple times before. I believe it is 6 2 in Mude's favor with him winning the last, like, five or four sets but again the exact numbers may be a little bit wrong the picture i'm trying to paint though is that this seems to be a very dominant record for mute and that really doesn't surprise me at all you have the slowest character in the game versus the best microspacer in the entire world like that just does not like sound like a lot of fun for sky j mutis is going to be perfectly able to play outside of his range unless he messes up because incineroar is a character but if you mess up you are going to be punished extremely hard, and Sky J is definitely going to be able to capitalize. So as long as Mudez plays perfect, which I'm honestly pretty confident he will, he should be fine there. And then you're going to have MK Leo versus Alan Dis, and I do think that Leo is going to win this one. He's just really good at the Snake matchup, and historically he has a really nice record on Alan Dis. But don't count Alan Dis out just because that guy is goaded at this game, and even if he ends up losing to MK Leo early on, I wouldn't be surprised if he made a loser's run. Next up is going to be Mudes versus Andres FN, and I think on paper, Kazuya is going to be Andres FN's best choice, but in practice, he's probably going to go Terry just because Terry is his best character, and that matchup isn't, like, significantly worse than Kazuya Peach. I'd honestly say they're pretty close, maybe Kazuya Peach being even, and then Terry Peach being slightly losing for Terry, but regardless... Whichever FGC character he chooses, I just think that Mutis is going to win this one because he's going to be able to microspace versus these FGC characters and force them to make mistakes, especially versus a character like Terry. Like, Terry is great up close and personal. He can jab you for 40%, down tilt for 40%, pretty much anything he wants to do for 40%, but when you're playing out of his range, he only has these really big swings that he can take at you, and Peach is one of the few characters in this game that can consistently out-damage Terry, so Terry is slightly in the disadvantage in the neutral, he's slightly in the disadvantage in the combo, he's just pretty much slightly in the disadvantage for everything, and on top of that, I just think Mudez is better than Andre Sven, so I, I just think Mudez is going to win that one. But of course, not impossible for Andre Sven, still a very talented player, but it's going to be tough. Then you're going to have MK Leo versus Hazar, and I do think that Leo is going to win that one. Honestly, I don't even want to talk about it because the idea of a Dr. Mario beating MK Leo uh, kind of just scares me, and it's very possible because Hazar is crazy at this game, so let's just move on. Then you're going to have Mudez versus MK Leo for that final topic qualifier, at least to the winner's side, and I do think that Mudez is going to take this. Since Genesis, Mudez is up 6 and 0 on. On games versus NK Leo. He has been very dominant there. And on top of that, he's coming into this event with his first ever major win at Patchwork, where he was playing incredibly, by the way. I think Mutis is going to come into this event extremely hot and top it to the winner's side. And y'all know the drill at this point. We don't do the loser side of the bracket just because the majority of these matchups are not going to happen. So I'm taking the players that are most likely to top eight, and I have given them their percentages. You're going to have the confidence here with Spargo, Light, Shine, and Mark, and Mutis. Fairly self explanatory. Those are the guys that picked the top eight through the winner side. Then you're going to have somewhat confident with Sonic, Shattuck, and Kaylin Glutzi. And those are the players that have picked the top eight through the loser side of the bracket. Specifically, I think Sonic is going to get the top eight through this part of the bracket right here because I have him losing to Shiny Mark. And honestly, I don't really care who's in his way. 
I just think Sonic is going to be everyone until you get into this top eight, unless it's Shattuck, which could, really could be a little bit scary, but I think Shattuck is going to end up losing to Lima, so he's going to pop out in this part of the bracket right here, and in a pretty similar situation to Sonic, I just don't see anyone that is going to be beating Shattuck here, whether this is Othimo or Meister or Siski right here. I just think Shattuck is going to be every single one of those opponents and get top eight to the winner's side. I will say Siski is a little bit scary just because Torn Samus is not a great matchup for Korn, but I think Shattuck should be able to overcome it. I think Lutein is going to get top eight just through the normal part of the bracket right here, as he's projected to do so. I'm not really sure who he's going to be facing since this is likely not going to be MKLeo or Mude since both Zomba and Tweak are DQ, but regardless of who it is, I think he's going to win it. And then finally, you are going to have MKLeo top eight through this part of the bracket right here because he is going to be replacing Zomba most likely after he ends up losing to Mude. And then this is probably going to be MK Big Boss or Gak. Heavy, heavy favorite versus MK Big Boss. And I was also heavily favor him versus Gak as well just because of the characters that he plays, but definitely versus MK Big Boss if he ends up making a run here. Leo's just got an amazing record right there. So those are the people that I think are going to top eight, but there's also a bunch of other players that could top eight. Lima, Osimo, and Meister. I put them in their own tier because I think that they have a higher chance of top eighting than these players right here. And that's no offense to any of these players, of course. It's more so just a compliment to these three guys because I've just been so impressed by them. Again, I really, really specifically want to highlight Lima. I feel like this is a player that does not get enough credit. He is extremely good at this game. And I think he's got a real shot to top eight. And everyone else is going to be Siski, Gak, MK Big Boss, Apollo Kage, Alan Dis, and Cosmos. And once again, I have these three players in their own segment of Sky J, Big D, and Waka. And I think they're the level of play that everyone else in this group is but i think their characters just aren't as good as everyone else in this group especially for big d ice climbers is just such a high variance character he could just get a terrible bracket and not even make it out of pools or he could top eight to the winner's side and both of those options seem like honestly pretty plausible I mean, the exact same thing for honestly waka and sky j as well all of these players have a chance to top eight and i would honestly be pretty shocked if someone that wasn't on this list didn't end up top eighting unless i just completely forgot them so if there's a player that is on the list and you think they can top eight just leave a comment down below and i'll be sure to tell you how their run looks and let's get into this top eight and we have arrived at the top eight this graphic is made by the lovely memorization as always their link will be down below so be sure to check them out and sub while you're down there but our first matchup in the winner's side is going to be lights versus spargo and this is a tough one to predict it's normally a tough one to predict but they haven't played since genesis and both these players are coming into this event extremely cold especially for spargo who we haven't seen since japan trip but it's a similar situation to light where we haven't seen him since momocon where he ends up getting 13th place both these players are taking some pretty rough performances to their standard of course and coming into the event it's tough to say how they're going to perform now assuming they made it to the top eight of the bracket winner side they're probably playing pretty well here and there's one thing that i specifically want to compliment light for in the cloud matchup and that is going to be his edge guarding that's right the fox player has figured out how to edge guard cloud before any of you have and personally i think it's a pretty big issue but that's something that we can talk about for another time and i think those edge guards for light are going to come in clutch and grant him that dub but only slightly this is going to be a banger it always is when light and spargo play and i'm honestly really excited for it speaking of sets i'm excited for shiny mark versus mutes the last time they played was at patchwork and it did go into mutes's favor overall it's going to be 2-0 in mutes's favor but i still think that shiny mark is going to win this one just because of how amazingly he played at the pre-local like maybe if i did this for prediction before the pre-local I would have slightly given it to Mutis because he also played amazing at Patrick was looking really clean coming into this event but Shiny Mark just blew me away with his performance he was doing everything that I wanted him to do and honestly more so even though historically this isn't a great matchup for him I think he's gonna get the dub Next up is going to be Gluttony versus Sonics in the loser side. And I definitely think that Sonics is going to win this one, both on paper and in practice. He just seems to come out on top. The record's really good for him. The matchup's really good for him. There's just a lot of things going for Sonics in this one. Is it impossible for Gluttony to win? Nothing's impossible for Gluttony, obviously not, but it's probably not going to happen. Then we're going to have MK Leo versus Shattuck. And this one is a really interesting one to me because I do think that Joker slightly beats Korn. Not an unwinnable matchup by any means. The gun is just a really good tool. It's always a really good tool, of course but the only time Shattuck and MKLeo have played, Shattuck does manage to take that set. And that was before Shattuck was like an undeniable top 10 player in the world. I believe it was at Let's Make Boost Miami, but again, don't quote me on that one. So I'm going to say that Shattuck wins this one because he beat Leo before he was like even good at the game. Next up is Mudes versus Sonics, and they played recently at Level Up Expo, and they end up trading sets there with Mudes winning the first one and then Sonics winning the second one. And the fact that Mudes was able to take a set at all honestly does inspire confidence for me because I think Peach versus Sonic is a really difficult matchup for Peach because she's not able to get that utilization out of the micro spacing that she normally is because Sonic is just 
pretty much impossible for to predict where he's actually going to like pop out of his animations is he going to be halfway across the stage is he going to be all the way across the stage he's not going to come at me at all it's just so difficult to keep track of this character especially when you have someone as fast as sonic's piloting him so i'm going to say that sonic should win this one just because i think the matchup is pretty tough but venus has done it before there's no reason that he can't do it again then you're going to have spargo versus shattuck and this one i am very excited for it if it does end up happening because the last time these two guys played was in the grand finals of collision you do have spargo taking that set and shattuck has never beaten spargo until smash factor 11 of course where he ends up getting that first win i think the break is going to bite spargo in the butt here shattuck has been persistently grinding we've been seeing him getting better and better every single time he goes to an event where we just haven't really seen spargo now he could also persistently be grinding the best he's ever been i have no idea but because i have no idea and i know shattuck's really good i'm gonna go with america on this one so we've got our top four, Light Shining Mark in the winner side and Sonic Shattuck in the loser side. For Light Shining Mark, I would heavily favor Shining Mark in this one. Fox just has a couple matchups in this game that aren't unwinnable, but they're miserable. Luigi's one of them, Ice Climbers is one of them, and Pikachu is also one of them. Maybe you want to consider Pichu for that as well, but that's not really important to the conversation. The edge guarding, every single time Fox goes off stage, he should be dying if a Pikachu player is competent, and Shaddy Mark is extremely competent, as we all know. Fox doesn't get that shield pressure versus Pikachu because the characters out of shield game is so good. He has a tough time dealing with T-Jolt as well, in my opinion. The matchup is overall just not a lot of fun for fox and i do think that shiny mark should be winning that one then you're gonna have sonics versus shattuck and they only played four times and they were all at the same event the luminosity smash invitational sonics takes the first two sets and shattuck ends up taking the second two sets and i do think that shattuck is also going to take this tiebreaker set right here because shattuck was able to beat sonics without really any high level sonic experience at least in tournament whereas spargo rather sonics has so much experience versus corn specifically because of spargo as my brain was just alluding to so he had matchup knowledge going in and shattuck was able to overcome him because he just read him as a player and now shattuck has matchup knowledge going in overall the matchup is even for the characters i think it's gonna be a really close one but i think shattuck's gonna take so we've got our losers finals of light versus shattuck and pretty much everything is stacked against shattuck here the matchup is bad for corn fox is just so overwhelming and it's able to deal with a lot of corn's pressure very well and also corn's out of shield game isn't very good so fox just loves mashing on that which is obviously difficult the record is going to be 6-2 in light's favor overall but recently it's been a lot better for shattuck it's going to be 2-3 in 2024 for light's favor of course and he does win their last encounter at gommel but even with all of that i still think that shattuck is going to be able to overcome this one and it's just because I feel it in my bones. And I know this is an analysis channel. That's probably not what you're looking for when you click on this video. Uh, but it's what you're getting. I feel it in my bones. Shattuck is going to win this and move on to the grand finals where he's going to face versus Shattuck Mark. They've played three times before. Shattuck Mark winning two of those sets, including the most recent encounter at Diamond Dust. And I do think that he is also going to win this set right here and be your winner of Smash Factor 11. And straight up, unless it's Spargo in the grand finals or Spargo just in the path of Shining Mark, I am very confident that Shining Mark is going to win this event. There's only two people that can stop him. Spargo, as I mentioned, or himself, because Pikachu is a very high variance character. If you're not playing this character correctly and you're missing your inputs, you are probably not going to make it into the top eight. So if Shining Mark is able to make it into that top eight, he's playing well, I'm feeling very confident that he is going to be able to take it, even if Spargo is in his pathway. Obviously, then it's going to be the ultimate challenge. But do you know what? I believe in the Pikachu prodigy. And with that, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the sport. It's been absolutely unreal as of late. If there's anything I left out, got wrong, or if you just want to say hi, leave a comment down below. Be sure to sub while you're down there, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye.